Family Guy, What the Fook, written by Dave Chan. Family Guy, What the Fook, cold open, fade in, interior Griffin living room, evening. The Griffins watch TV. Dad, do we have to watch PBS? Chris, just because PBS isn't a legitimate network doesn't mean they won't show crap either. That's not true, Peter. There are many highly informative yet entertaining programs on here. Like this documentary on the different wax museums around the world hosted by Leonard Nimoy. On TV, Leonard Nimoy strolls into a museum. Arguably, South America's single greatest contribution to the modern world can be found on display here at the Brazilian Wax Museum. The Griffins stare wide-eyed, except Stewie. Anyone else suddenly in the mood for oysters? Fade out. End of cold open. Act 1. Fade in. Interior shopping mall day. Peter and Brian walk past stores. Damn it. Lois's birthday is tomorrow and I still don't know what to get her. What the hell does she like doing besides laundry anyway? Maybe she would appreciate it if you just made her a nice meal. Uh, no way, Brian. Those cookbooks are way too confusing. Interior Griffin Kitchen. Evening. Flashback. Peter reads from Martha Stewart's Cooking Seasoned Meats. After allowing your beef brisket to marinate overnight, stab Rob Lowe in the gut with a dull stick. Peter turns to Rob Lowe and stabs him. He drops to the floor. <clears throat> then place in the oven at 325 for four hours. Peter looks at his marinated beef, then at Rob Lowe, back at his marinated beef, back at Rob Lowe. Interior shopping mall, day. Back to scene. Peter and Brian stand in front of the Patriots team store. I still don't think what you did to Rob Lowe was right. I have two words for you, Brian. About last night. Interior, 99 cent store, <coughs> continuous. Stewie hands the male cashier a dollar bill for a bag of Cheerios <coughs> snack mix. Those Cheerios cost one ninety-nine, little man. That's a dollar. For arrogance! Your sign clearly states this is a 99 cent store, so it would behoove you to open up that register and hand over my one cent change for this bag of crunchy goodness. Toots is sweet. A toddler enjoys his Cheerios as his mother pays the cashier. You think you're so clever, don't you? Using your maternal figure to insert my right to those Cheerios. Revenge is a dish best served with cold milk. One day I shall lay claim to all Cheerios in this city, starting with yours. Stewie snatches the bag from the toddler. He cries loudly. Yes, that's it. Show me how bad you are, this. The mother returns the bag to the toddler. No, that's not yours. Don't you mock me. Interior shopping mall day. Chris shoots water on Meg's breasts with a squirt gun. Yeah, <laughs> you're lactating. Teenagers laugh at Meg. Bruce stands nearby. He does look like she's lactating. That's so silly. Dad! Shh. Daddy's trying to walk. What the hell is your problem? You never listen to me. Sometimes... Sometimes I wonder if you even care about me at all. Aw, oh, Meg. Shut up. Interior Griffin living room day. Peter walks in with bags marked the Patriots Team Store. He sees Lois and stops. Oh, crap. Interior Griffin Living Room, later. Peter walks in with more bags marked the Patriots Team Store. He sees Lois and stops. Peter takes out a checkbook. Why don't I just write you a check? Peter, where did you get the money to buy all this stuff? Lois, your heart says I love you, but your head says blah, blah, blah. So for your birthday, I'll just make this up to my beautiful, red-headed, sexy booty, best wife of all time, Lois Griffin. Peter hands Lois the check that has everything he just said scribbled and misspelled in the payable to section. This check is from a home equity account. Peter, did you borrow against our house without even telling me? Oh, now it's my fault because you don't remember when we agreed to this. Interior, Griffin living room, day, flashback. Lois reads a book. Peter runs in, circles the couch, and heads right back out. Lois, I'm borrowing money against our house without your permission because I'm the boss of me and you can't stop this. Lois hasn't looked up. Peter sticks his head back in. And I want meatballs for dinner tonight. Interior Griffin living room, day. Back to scene. Brian walks in and opens a letter from the mail. This letter says the bank is seizing the house next week for delinquent payments. What? Peter, it was your job to pay those bills. I did, but I got bored doing it every month. So I started using the statements to make this little paper mache bust of Kiss Lee guitarist ace freely. Peter holds up just that. Talk and roll. Interior, Quahog Savings and Loan Day. Peter walks in. A female bank manager sits nearby. Who is the manager here? I am, sir. Is there a problem? 
Why, yes, there is. I can't say the word monolith. And I want my house back, you greedy corporate bastards! I'm sure we can straighten all this out. Do you have your latest bank statement? I brought all of them. Peter holds up Ace Fraley's head. Rock and roll. I see. Now, can I have my house back? No. How about now? Please leave. Interior high school hallway. Day. Neil slides up to Meg. Go away, Neil. What if I were to offer you the coveted title of third level Raven Queen in my weekly D and D club? I'd rather kiss a horny toad. I knew you'd crash someday. Neil takes out a horny toad from his pocket. Come on, baby. You want this? God, I so need to get laid. Fook, a Vietnamese student, walks up behind Meg. He sounds surprisingly like Justin Bieber. Hi, I'm new here. Can you tell me where her homeroom is? What do I look like? Meg turns around to see Fuchs' gaze, a moment of bliss. They're in love. I know what you look like. An angel. Like those little, chubby ones in paintings. Meg, with puppy dog eyes, speaks gibberish. I don't know what that means, but my name's Fook. I'm Meg. I have another question. Why don't we just walk to homeroom together? I have a question for you. How many babies do you want me to have? Sorry to disappoint you, Fook. This tantalizing young sling happens to be my woman. Meg and Fook walk off together. Fook snaps his finger. Three Vietnamese gangsters appear and give Neil a wedgie pulling his white briefs over his face. Oh God! Yesterday's meatloaf didn't taste good the first time! Interior, Pewter Schmidt living room, day. Lois sits with Carter and Barbara. Thanks for letting us stay with you. It'll just be until we get back on our feet again. Is the fat one with the glasses coming too? Don't listen to your father, dear. Of course Meg can stay. Peter's heart's in the right place, Daddy. He's just an idiot. I can't argue with you there. You can stay as long as you want. Just keep out of the shed in the back. Why? What's in the shed? Mila Kunis, tied and gagged, wearing a St. Pauli girl outfit. Ha! <laughs> just kidding, sweetheart. No, but really, don't go in there. Exterior Griffin House, day. Meg, Chris, Lois, and Brian carry moving boxes to the station wagon. Peter hammers a house for sale sign into the lawn. Peter, what are you doing? If you must know, wife, I'm trying to sell a house so we can get money to buy it back. Well, you really don't get it. Oh, I get it, Brian. This is our struggle against the man trying to keep us down, ever since my peoples was stolen from Africa. That made no sense whatsoever. I wouldn't expect a white dog to understand. Oh, for God's sakes, Peter. Can you just put that down and help us move? Peter reaches in Lois's moving box and pulls out a black dildo. He waves it in Lois's face. Yeah, looks like somebody's got a sweet tooth for dark chocolate. What the hell? Peter, that's not mine! Stewie pulls his wagon up to Brian, Chris, and Meg. So, um, if anyone finds something that doesn't belong to them, just give me a holler. Funny how things tend to get mixed up with all these goings on and such. That's why moving sucks. Eh, yeah, you know where to find me. Interior Pewter Schmidt Kitchen, day. Meg and Fook walk in. Lois cooks dinner as the family sits at the table. Hey everyone, this is Fook. Hi. Sorry, what's your name? Fook. Can you say it a little slower, but this time with more of an accent? Fook. Pretend it's the late 1800s, and we're working on the railroads. Fook. Pretend you're Mickey Rooney and breakfast at Tiffany's. Fook. Oh, you're precious. Peter giggles every time someone says Fook in this scene. Hey mom, can Fook stay for dinner? <laughs> sure, honey. Do you know how to use a knife and fork, Fook? <laughs> mom. Can you help me with my math homework, Fook? <laughs> sure, I'd be glad to. I know, Chinese Rain Man. God, I hate this family. Okay, everybody, just stop. First of all, Meg's Asian boyfriend is Vietnamese. Second, he shouldn't have to put up with these antiquated stereotypes when he's a guest in our own home. You're right, Brian. We're sorry, Fook. I need to apologize. I'm used to that kind of stuff. Hey, maybe I can help make dinner? That would be wonderful! Fook whacks Brian unconscious with a bat and stuffs him into a pot on the stove. Rob Lowe appears at the kitchen window. <laughs> Interior Pewter Schmidt Basement. <coughs> Evening. Peter places a candle inside Ace Fraley's head to use as a lantern and hums rock and roll all night. Pretty. 
Now where can I put you so you can shine your beautiful light for all the world to see? Peter eyes a stockpile of matchbooks, fireworks, containers of gasoline, dynamite sticks, and books by Glenn Beck. Exterior Pewter Schmidt Estate, continuous. An explosion sends everyone onto the front lawn, including Mila Kunis, dressed in a St. Pauli girl outfit. You people are freaks! Mila runs away. The rest of the family escape the blaze. Oh my god! Is everybody alright? I think I cut my finger! I think I cut my finger! Peter! You did this, didn't you? That's it! This is the last straw! If you don't get our house back, it's over between us! Is that understood? Carter loads his shotgun. Thanks to you, Mila Kunis already has a 20-second head start. But I thought Mila Kunis was impervious to bullets. She is. Exterior street, evening. The scene looks like a silent film with vaudeville music playing. Carter chases Peter in Keystone Cops fashion. Fade out. End of Act 1. Act 2. Fade in. Interior, the drunken clown. Evening. Peter, Quagmire, and Joe. Drink at their usual spot. Horace serves drinks behind the bar. Things at home are real bad, guys. Because of me, we're staying at that crap motel out on Route 7. If you're in Room 23, those blood things on the wall are definitely not from a dead hooker from a Cincinnati with a bad leg. What's worse, if I don't get our house back, Lois is going to leave me. What? 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 What do you mean? She'll be like, I'm single? Yes, Quagmire. What part of Route 7 don't you understand? You know, Peter. Maybe you could earn a little extra cash working here. I would do it, but they still haven't built a wheelchair ramp yet, and this is my silent protest! That's a great idea, Joe. Hey, Horace, you looking for any help? Nah, I already hired a bunch of illegal Mexican immigrants. Hard workers, and they never talk back. I'm gonna need this table cleaned off, Chewie. Chewbacca cleans off Peter's table and roars at him. <laughs> Exterior. Cohog Savings and Loan, night. Peter and Brian are dressed in black. It's really quite simple, Brian. All we have to do is sneak into the bank and change my mortgage status using the, uh, the, uh... Computer? I was gonna say the Bourne TV, but that's fine. We'll go with yours. By far your most outlandish idea ever. Except the time when you auditioned for that short film. Exterior street, day. Flashback. Actors rehearse their lines. A sign on the door reads, Snuff Film Auditions. Peter, giddy as a schoolgirl. Oh God, I hope I get it. I hope I get it. I hope I get it. Exterior Quahog Savings and Loan. Night. Back to scene. Peter throws a grappling hook. He and Brian climb the rope. Mayor Adam West also scales the side of the building in his pajamas, sleepwalking. That's right. I'm the mayor now. So you can suck on that, Gordon. Interior Quahog Savings and Loan, later. Peter and Brian drop from the ceiling and run to a computer. Peter's focus is intense. He types and types and types. Peter, you have to turn it on first. You do it your way, I'll do it mine. Brian turns on the computer. Peter types. For mortgage status, he replaces poor with gooder. Bam, done. How is it that you never graduated high school? Gee, can't really answer that, Brian, but at least I went to school high. Interior, the Big Bang Theory TV set, day, cutaway. Live action shot of Sheldon Cooper looking into the camera. Bazinga! Exterior, the Ho Chi Minh nightclub, night. A Hummer pulls up to the curb. Fook, Meg, and Stewie get out. Interior, the Ho Chi Minh nightclub moments later. Fook shows Meg around. Stewie follows. Wow, I can't believe you own this place. I've always had Meg for business, but I'd give it all up if it meant that I could spend the rest of my life with you. Fook goes down on one knee. Meg Griffin, I know we've only been dating for a month, but this feels so right. Will you marry me? Oh, Fook, yes! Stewie walks away. My God, I can start a Vita factory with all this cheese. Interior, the Ho Chi Minh nightclub basement, moments later. Stewie walks past a couple of open doors. Let's see what kind of operation this guy's running here. Through an open door, Stewie sees a bunch of Asian kids chained to a sewing machine making clothes underneath a banner that reads, Gap Kids. Oh, there's Mikey from preschool. Hey, Mikey! Mikey, an Asian toddler, stops working in waves. A Vietnamese gangster whips him. 
Mikey gets back to work. Yeah, that's a bummer. Stewie passes another door and sees Vietnamese gangsters hand out packets of heroin to addicts. One addict drops his packet, and others fight over it. In another corner of the room, addicts shoot up. There appears to be a high demand for this mystery substance. Of course, if I can get my hands on some of this and sell it, I can buy up all the Cheerios and Quahog. But first, I need to run some experiments on a test subject. Interior kids motel room, day. Chris watches TV, picking his nose. Stewie walks up to Chris and injects him with a syringe. Chris drops to the floor. Interior kids motel room, later. Chris lies in bed, hooked up to an IV drip with a smile from ear to ear. Stewie speaks into a tape recorder. Day one of clinical trials. As hypothesized, when injected with a mystery substance, test subject appears extremely content and somewhat stupid. Chris vomits straight up to the ceiling. I say, this is going to be easier than Phil Jackson's coaching job on the Chicago Bulls when Jordan was still on the team. Interior, Chicago Stadium, evening, cutaway. During a game, Phil Jackson relaxes on the bench and reads the newspaper as players run up to him one by one. Coach, the trap is on the pick and roll. Give it to Michael. Coach, we're down by one with two seconds left. Give it to Michael. Coach, I made this lovely bun cake with vanilla frosting. Give it to Michael. Coach, I think this hooker just gave me the clap. Give it to Rodman. Interior, Jamie Max, $3.99 all-you-can-eat house of steaks, day. Peter, Lois, Stewie, Brian, and Chris eat. Meg and Fuchs saunter in. Meg wears tons of fancy jewelry. Family, I fixed everything. We'll be getting a house back in no time. That's great, Peter. Meg, I need you to watch Stewie this afternoon. This afternoon isn't good. In fact, no afternoon is going to be good. What's gotten into you, young lady? You mean besides Fook? Blah. I'm just so done with this family. By the way, we're getting married. What? Are you crazy? Hey, Meg, Mr. Teague just called. He wants his gold. Uh Fook shoots Brian with a blow dart gun and drags him off. I'm going to take Brian for a walk. That won't be necessary. We trained him to use the bathroom while listening to Dane Cook's stand up. Baby, your family's killing my bus. I need a half beginning. Later, losers. Fook and Meg exit. Chris slips money to Stewie under the table in exchange for drugs. I told you we should have kept her on porn. That was a joint decision. Mom, can I borrow your spoon? You can have mine, Chris. And a heating instrument of some kind? I guess I won't be needing these candles anymore. And a long last band? Here, you can use my belt instead. Oh, Chris, do me a favor and throw out this dirty syringe I found. Stewie's cell phone vibrates. He answers it. I told you, you never call me on this line. Yes, I've got more candy, but if you call here again, the store is closed. You hear me, cool? The store is fucking closed. Stewie hangs up, livid. Exterior city alley, continuous. The Kool-Aid man hides by a dumpster and puts away his phone. He pours a bag of white powder into himself. He relaxes. Oh, yeah. Exterior motel, day. Two FBI agents approach Chewbacca landscaping the shrubs. FBI agent number one holds up a surveillance photo of Peter, dressed in black with his leg up to fart. Have you seen this man? Chewbacca nods and points to one of the rooms. Through a window, Peter has his leg up, about to fart. We're also looking for Chewbacca the Wookiee. Have you seen him? Mm, no, no, Vianetta. Let's go. He's just an illegal Mexican. Interior, parents' motel room, day. Peter enters the door. The FBI agents stand outside. Peter Griffin? That all depends. FBI. Sweet! Then yes, I am. Stewie walks in, followed by two topless women dressed only in panties, wearing surgical masks. Stewie carries heroin in each hand. The women carry scales and chemical glassware. We have a warrant for your arrest. Stewie makes a U-turn and leads the women into the bathroom. Whoa, whoa, hold on. <coughs> Time out. Is it too late to change my answer? You're wanted for breaking and entering and financial cybercrime. We're also here for Dane Cook. The camera pans to Dane Cook next to Peter doing stand-up. So I was on a flight the other day, and there was this guy. This guy, right, and he sneezes. This guy looks at me, and he sneezes. This guy just sneezes, and he's looking right at me, okay? And this guy sneezes. This guy who's looking right at me. The same guy. He's looking at me, and he sneezes. I just pooped. A toilet flushes off screen. Fade out. End of Act 2. Act 3. Fade in. 
Interior, the Uchi Min nightclub, night. Meg sits on a throne as half-naked dancers entertain her. Fook drags in Neil, who's tied up. Neil! I'm going to kill him for your pleasure, my love. What? You can't just kill him. Ooh, torture first. Maybe you put the spring in my roll. Have no fear, Meg. With this remote device, I'll summon Flappy Fanny Padunka Mama to our coordinates. Prepare to meet your demise, Fook. Interior motel room continuous. In bed, Megatron and Flappy Fanny Podunka Mama get it on. Oh yes, right there. Oh yes. When Megatron orgasms, a laser blast blows off the female robot's head and shoots a hole through the headboard. Megatron slowly backs away, opens the door, and runs off. Interior, the Ho Chi Minh nightclub, continuous. No one comes to save them. Okay, now I'm going to kill you both. Interior, kids' motel room, opium den, night. Toddler addicts are splayed out. Stewie sports a Chinese queue, a silk robe, and long fingernails. Benoit. Benoit, an Asian dressed in a loincloth, runs up to Stewie. Balls. Benoit hands Stewie two Chinese stress balls from his loincloth. Stewie plays with them and surveys his dominion. The same toddler from the mall, now strung out, rocks back and forth, cradling a box of Cheerios. Chris smokes an opium pipe, completely emaciated with the same football-shaped head as Stewie. Lois runs in. Kids, your father got arrested again. What the hell's going on in here? Hungry. Chris chews the flesh off his leg. My God, Chris! Outside, Megatron sneaks past their room. Interior FBI office, night. The FBI agents, engrossed in a game of Pictionary, bicker like two brats. Lois sneaks behind them and steals a key. That's not a gazebo. Yes it is, you're just dumb. It looks like a mushroom. That's what your sister said. Interior FBI holding cell, night. Peter and Brian sit across from each other. Boy, this is all my fault, Brian. Well, at least you're man enough to admit... No, you're an idiot. But worst of all, Lois is going to leave me for good. Lois runs over, carrying Stewie and dragging Chris. Oh, Lois, thank God you're here. I was starting to run out of people to blame for my farts. Peter, I think Meg's in trouble. She hasn't been answering her phone. FBI Most Wanted, Dead or Alive, poster shows Fook, Megatron, Cobra Commander, and Miley Cyrus. Look, Meg's Asian fiancé is wanted for drug trafficking. If we find him, we'll find Meg. I would just cut our losses. The kid's got the entire Viet Cong army in his basement. Wait, you know where they are? Yeah, I swept a matchbook from there. I collect them, you know. I collect matchbooks. Didn't know that about me, did you, Brian? The Hoochie Min. Oh man, oh man, I just got that. Family? To the back cave. Peter struggles to bend the holding cell bars. No luck. Lois hands him the stolen key. Try this. All right, but I don't see how this is going to help. Peter struggles to bend the key. No luck. Brian, you want to help me out here? Brian growls as he gnaws on Chris's chewed leg. Interior, the Ho Chi Minh nightclub. Night. Peter, Brian, Stewie, and Lois run in, dragging Chris, who swallows more of his own leg. Meg and Neil are tied up. Let them go, Fook! <laughs> oh, I am going to miss you. The FBI agents burst in and perform unnecessary somersaults. Fook dog dong! You're under arrest for the transport and sale of heroin in the United States. Fook suddenly speaks with a loud, thick Asian accent. Oh, that what you think, FBI man? Yes, I knew he had an accent. Why are you talking like that? He only sounded like Justin Bieber so he could hide his true identity. Vietnam's biggest drug lord. So, you never really loved me? Oh, Prince, I got mad bitches back home. I just use you to get green card. That's it, Fook. You can manipulate my language by mixing up the L's and the R's, but I won't let you manipulate my family. Oh, you gonna die that way, man? Fook screams something in Vietnamese. His gangsters surround the Griffins with weapons drawn. Get them all! Doggy's mine! A gunfight ensues. Brian picks up a gun and shoots the one out of Fook's hand. Fook raises his arms and surrender. Peter smashes Fook with a chair. Exterior, the Ho Chi Minh nightclub. Night. The FBI agents escort Fook out of the building. Mr. Griffin, the FBI extends their gratitude for helping apprehend a dangerous criminal. Yeah, it's a good thing we were at the Pinkberry across the street. 
or else we never would have spotted you. Peter, I think this would be a good time to negotiate with them. I read you loud and clear, buddy. <clears throat> Since we helped capture your most wanted, perhaps me and Ryan can get a couple of those t-shirts that say FBI, Female Body Inspector. No, the other thing. Oh, yeah, maybe you can let us go, too. Oh, what the hell. It's Friday. Thanks, you guys. Sorry for being such a jerk these past few weeks. Meg, if there's one thing you should know, a lion always looks after his pride, no matter how unattractive his daughter is. When I get out, I find you, Meg. I find you, and I kill you. I kill you! Peter smashes food with a chair. Oh, didn't you get the memo? We're through. That's right. We're through. Peter smashes Meg with a chair. Interior Griffin kitchen. Day. The Griffins sit at the table. Peter wears his FBI t-shirt. So how do you finally get the money to buy back the house, Peter? I auctioned off all Meg's jewelry on eBay. Plus, there was a huge pile of cash under Stewie's crib. Nothing unusual there. Stewie smokes a cigar a la Robert De Niro from Cape Fear. You learn about loss. But I still didn't have enough money to buy you a gift, Lois. Peter, you got our family back together. That's the best birthday present you could ever give me. Chris, back to normal, pulls a sneaker out of his mouth. What the hell happened to me? Kids, I guess the lesson here is, when you run into problems and feel like you have nowhere to go, you can always turn to drugs. Isn't that right, Meg? Peter winks at Mila Kunis, who's dressed in Meg's clothes. Tied and gagged, she nods fearfully. Interior, Peter Schmidt basement, continuous. The real Meg, tied and gagged, wears a St. Pauli girl outfit. Fade out. End of Act 3. Tag. Faded. Interior, FBI interrogation room. Day. Fuchs sits at a table as the FBI agents play Guitar Hero and sing karaoke to Wrecking Ball. Ah, kill me now! Looks like we'll need the closer to break this one. The FBI agents exit. Herbert emerges from the shadows and handcuffs himself to Fook. Just like Nixon, I'll be pushing deep into Vietnamese territory. Only this time, I won't be pulling out. Mm -hmm. Fade out. End of show.